We get this question on Discord and GitHub all the time. How can I call a tier PC procedure from within another procedure? Another version of the same question is, I've discovered create caller and I'm trying to use it in a procedure, but I get a type error. What's up with that? I wanted to make a video about this because it goes so much deeper than tier PC. The thing with this is you think you're asking a question that's specific to tier PC, but what you're actually asking is a really fundamental question about API design and even software development in general. Let's think back to quote unquote traditional APIs, whether that's something like Express, Django, .NET, whatever. You would never call a controller from within another controller. What you would do is extract the logic that you want to reuse into a function, and then you call that. And that's the same thing you do in TRPC. Let's take a look at that. So here's a somewhat contrived example. I have a procedure that gets something from the database, performs some complex business logic, and then returns something. I might want to use this somewhere else. Let's say I want to use the logic from the procedure I just showed you to get a product, then I want to have the price, then I want to return the product. This is obviously kind of a contrived example, but if you're watching this, then I'm sure you've already encountered a real example where you wanted to do something like this. You may have landed on this page from the TRPC docs, where it says that create caller function returns you an instance of route or caller able to execute queries and mutations. That sounds pretty good, right? But then you go and try it out, and you're immediately treated with a type error that doesn't have a very helpful error message. Now, putting that error message aside, let's think about this for a minute. In order to even get to this procedure, you had to create context and go through the middleware chain. So when we land here, to create context again and to run through the middleware chain again is pure overhead. In fact, there's an open PR on the TRPC docs, which will hopefully get merged soon because it explains this quite well, which tells you not to use the caller like this and instead extract the logic to a function. And that's what we're going to do. So let's go and extract a function. Let's first write the signature for that function. So it's going to be an async function called get product. And we're going to need our database. And we'll also need some input. So let's add that. Now, our database is the type of the database. But how do we get to the type of our input? Well, if we have some schema that describe the input, then we can just infer the type. So here we can do type product input is equal to zot dot infer type of get product input schema. And then here we can say input is product input. And then all we have to do is take this paste it into here and fake Prisma is not coming from context anymore. So we just use it like this and that's our function extracted. Now here we can just return get product and we'll pass our fake Prisma to it and we'll also pass our input to it. And now we've successfully extracted this function so we can call it from anywhere we want. So let's call it from get one discounted. So here we can do const product is equal to get product and we'll pass to it again, fake Prisma and input. And then we can say const discounted product is equal to the product and the price shirt will have it. And we're getting an error here because we're not awaiting the function. And then we can return the discounted product. And that's really all there is to it. We've used the logic from one procedure in another procedure. Now, one question you might have is how do you structure this in a bigger app? My belief here is that you should solve this problem when you get to it. There's this great website about React file structure that says move files around until it feels right. And there's a tweet by Dan Abramoff that goes along with it, which says start by putting everything in one file. When it feels like it's annoying, start splitting them up. When that gets annoying, maybe add some folders. But let's say you're already there. Your routers are huge and becoming a real mess and you need to get it under control. The traditional model here is to split it out by type of file. So you'd have one file that has all of your procedures for the router, one file that has all of your schema for the router, one file that has all of your database queries for the router, and so on. But I find that this doesn't actually help me with my organization very much. This tweet from Max Stoiber really stuck with me. It's obviously about the front end and having your markup in JavaScript and styling all in one place. But I think the same concept can be applied elsewhere, for example, in how to organize a backend. So what does this look like in a backend? The way I do it is that each route and all of the stuff that goes with it gets one file. So here you can see we're defining a schema. We're getting a type of the input from the schema. Then we have the logic extracted into a function. And finally, we have the procedure. And of course, we only have a couple of lines here, but you can imagine how this file might be quite a bit bigger for some more complex business logic. And here we have a file for another procedure. And you can see we're importing the get product function from the get product file. And in this case, we're leaving the logic inside of the procedure. We're not breaking it out because we're not using it anywhere else. So there's no reason to break it out. And then finally, you have a file where you define all of your routes. So that's it for extracting logic and calling it from other procedures. I really think this is a super important concept and it applies to many places outside of TRPC as well. So hopefully you find this useful.
The other question we get a lot is how to call TRPC procedures from get server side props. There's a couple different ways to do this and they have different pros and cons. So let's go take a look at them. The first way is using create caller. Unlike in a router, you can actually use it in get server side props. The DX of being able to call your TRPC procedures is awesome, but it's still not ideal here because there's still a lot of overhead to creating it. And you can see here's a version of this page with client side routing. So if I refresh the page, it needs to load first. And let's go to the page with the caller. And you can see as soon as the page loads in, the data is on the page. But even though this works here, you really don't want to be doing this. So let's look at what other options we have. The second option is to just use a function. Get server side props runs on the backend. This is the same backend that all your other backend logic lives in. This is really important to understand. What it means is that almost anything you can do inside of a TRPC procedure, you can also do inside of get server side props. And remember, anything that you can import on the server, you can import in get server side props because get server side props is on the server. So for example, you can import your database connection just as you could anywhere else in your backend. So what we're doing here is we're calling the get product function, which is the function that we extracted earlier and then called from the get discounted product procedure. And then we just return the product in the props. And if we take a look at the function example, you can see again, our data loads in together with the page. If you've been paying attention, you might've noticed that so far we've only passed static data to the front end. This can be really useful if you're trying to render a static page, but sometimes what we really want is to have a TRPC query that can change its input, refetch and so on, but to give it some initial data that already gets rendered during server-side render. There are two ways to do this. The first you can do with either the caller or a function. I'll show that now. And the other way is by using the SSG helpers. More on that in a minute. It works exactly the same with a caller and with a function, so I'll just show it with a function here. So let's take a look at the next example file. And you can see absolutely nothing has changed inside of our get server side props. But let's take a look at the component itself. So we have a tier PC query here. And the important thing is that we're passing this initial data to it, which is the data that we sent to the front end from get server side props. And if we take a look at this example in our app, you can see this data loads in already with the initial page load. But then after that, it's not static. So for example, we can click here and get a different product. But there are some issues with this. The biggest one is that it's not type safe. And what that means is that we can stick anything into this initial data. And you can see for a second, the thing that we put into the initial data is on the page, even though it's incorrect. Now you might say this isn't a big deal if you just write your app correctly, but the whole point of TRPC is that we can write our apps in a type safe way and avoid bugs like this. So if this pattern is not ideal, what can we do instead? The answer is we can use the SSG helpers. SSG helpers are conceptually similar to the caller in that they give us the convenience of being able to call a procedure directly, but they're optimized for server-side rendering and static side generation. They're called SSG helpers, but they should really be called SSR and SSG helpers. Um, that's kind of a mouthful, so I can see why that name wasn't chosen. Let's take a look at how they work. They're designed specifically for this sort of thing, and it really shows when you start using them. We can use the create proxy SSG helpers function and we give it our router so the backend doesn't have to create that from scratch again. Then we create some context and we tell it to use super JSON. And then we can use prefetch to call a procedure. And you can see we're not actually assigning the result to a variable. Instead, we can take all the results of all the procedures we call and put them into this TRPC state and we dehydrate them and then they get rehydrated on the client. Now, in addition to prefetch, there's also fetch and the biggest difference is that it returns. So here we can assign this to a product and then for example, console log it or do something else with it. And another difference between fetch and prefetch is that fetch can throw. And then let's take a look at the page. And you can see that unlike before, there's nothing weird going on with our query. The hydration happens automatically and we don't really need to take care of anything. So now if we open the page, we can see it renders with the initial data from the server. And then we can fetch some more data, which is gonna happen client side. And we get a loading state while that's going on. And what's really nice about this is that we didn't need to change our front end component at all. So let's summarize the different ways of getting stuff in get server side props. If you just want to get something into the page once and then it's static from then on, the best thing to do is to extract a function and to just call that function in the backend. If you want to get initial data into a tier PC query, the SSG helpers are what you're looking for. And there's one last thing I wanted to cover, which is if we can't use create call in another procedure and it doesn't make sense to use it in get server side props, then what is it for? The one thing I find it really nice for is testing an entire procedure. You can stick a mocked session or a mocked Prisma client in there and then assert how the caller will behave. Of course, you can still test an extracted function as well. And sometimes that might be what you want to do, but being able to create a caller with any context you want and then test procedures with that caller is a really nice pattern. And that's it. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's something I missed that you would like to know. I have a few other videos planned as well. 
a big one about how to test the T3 app or any app that uses TRPC. That one's probably going to take a couple of weeks. But I also have a few smaller videos coming up. For example, one where we take a look at Create T3 Turbo and the amazing things you can do with that. And another one where I take a look at the current state of the app directory and server components in Next.js 13 and what the TRPC team has been cooking up with that. And of course, I'm always thankful for a thumbs up or a sub. So thanks a lot and see you in the next one.